Hey everyone, uh, I'm Alfred, and this is AI Dungeon. It is, I guess, technically a video game, wherein you play a game, like a, like a choose-your-own-adventure, and I like choose-your-own-adventures, but it uses machine learning and AI to generate it. We have a fantasy. I'm a ranger in real life. I'm Alfred. Generating that story. You are Alfred, a ranger living in the kingdom of Larion. You have a hunting bow and a quiver of arrows. You've been searching for a mythical beast for three months, tracking it through the forest. As you crouch behind a clump of trees, you see something move. You slowly stand as the arrows are released. One soar as one soars through the air and hits another tree, just behind it, making a dinging sound. <laughs> you quickly reload your arrow and try again. <laughs> Uh, I guess the tree is made of brass, I, I suppose. What do you do? Hunt beast. You hunt beast. The beast you were chasing, a silver ghoul, looks at you from across the clearing and lets out a growl. As it runs off, you fire a few more arrows as it disappears into the trees. <laughs> um, hmm. What are all these buttons doing? So undo. So that's the most recent one. What should the AI remember? World info. Oh, interesting. You can world build. That's neat. What do you do? Chase beast into tree. You chase beast into trees. As you run to the edge of the trees, you see a silver ghoul emerge from the underbrush. It lets out a chattering growl as you raise your bow at it. Shoot ghoul. You shoot ghoul. Your arrow hits the creature square in the chest. It pauses as it looks you dead in the eye before collapsing on the ground. You walk up to it and examine your work. You shoot ghoul. Yeah, kill a mythical beast. Oh, wait. Turn in quest? Worst. You turn in quest. As you turn in your quest, the guard says, That's the best quest I've had in years. Well done. The keeper nods and smiles. Thank you for your help, sir, replies the guard. Say, you're welcome. The guard looks confused. Well, I mean, thanks for the help. It was a pretty, well, it was pretty standard for a hunt. It was still satisfying to get the last hit. You reply, hmm. You go home. You walk outside and fire a tired-looking boy waiting for you. I'm Alfred. What's your name? He asks, extending his hand. Wait, I'm Alfred. You grab the boy, pull your dagger, and stab him in the throat, killing him instantly. <laughs> well, you're stronger than I thought you were then, replies the keeper. I'm sorry. Who are you? <laughs> Wait, who is the keeper? Oh, let's get meta. Let's wake up. As you open your eyes, you see a female keeper standing over you. Good, you're awake. I'll try to explain everything she says. What level of reality am I on? Oh my god. <laughs> Where are the rangers? Find rangers. I find the rangers. Stand to begin looking around. You spot a trail of blood leading up into the trees. Climb tree. You walk up to the trail of blood and through the trees you come to a clearing. The center you find the bodies of two rangers, one male and one female. You search the bodies and find a journal on the male ranger. Reading it, you learn the pair had been tracking a werewolf pack in the area. sword. You put a bolt in a werewolf neck and he <laughs> collapses to the ground. As you continue searching, the pack chases you off and reveals itself to be a group of six werewolves in total. <laughs> Wait, so I killed one and then I was like, hmm, where are those werewolves? I'll keep looking. And then I saw six of them. You were wounded in your hunt. But with rest and the right herbs, your wound should heal enough. That shouldn't be an issue. Okay. <laughs> oh my god.
god, this is fucking fantastic. <laughs> this is the best game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> Take the right arms. You walk back to your campsite and collect some herbs before walking back to where you killed the werewolves earlier. <laughs> Rest. <laughs> you find some large boulders that sit again. They begin placing them against your herbs. Taking out your herbs, placing them against large sticks so you can slowly chew them down. That's not bad. This is a really robust AI. There have been some hiccups here and there, but it's staggeringly coherent, I'll be honest. Okay. Let's return to camp. Uh, you begin to look through your pack for anything else you may have forgotten and find a metal disc. The disc is a silver color and seems to be some sort of radio transceiver. Is he going to confuse between like a D&D &D ranger, like, you know, Aragorn, ranger of the north, and like a park ranger? <laughs> oh, let's keep going here. I have found something strange, you say to the surrounding trees. <laughs> There's a pause before a voice crackles through. Good find, Jacob. <laughs> Wait, so am I Alfred still? When I woke up, was I was I still Alfred? Or was I am I Jacob and I'm dreaming that I'm Alfred? Or was um was Jacob the ranger that I found? Okay. Turn up the volume, listen carefully. This is Jacob, I'm found something strange. Good to hear from you, Jacob, what do you found? This is a ranger. <laughs> Talking to someone through the radio, I say, I found a radio, but it doesn't work. Into the radio. <laughs> I found something weird. And the other person on this other side of the radio says, oh, what'd you find? Oh, it's a radio. What? Where does this go? Hold on. Where, where does this go? Can you repair it? I don't know how it works. We'll give it a try. Fix radio. You fix radio. You take the strange disc and place it against the ob object and think about your electronics class. This part seems to be the power supply that's making a buzzing noise. Hold on, wait. Let's just enter. Good. Try connecting it together. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Yeah, didn't I just start... Yeah, I was just talking to the trees. Okay, so... Good, we got that sorted out. You nervously slide the piece of the transceiver together and push down on the top of the two sections you connected, resulting in a loud buzzing noise. Okay. It's working. I can communicate with something. You announced to yourself. That's great news, Jacob. What are you doing? I guess I'll keep going. <laughs> you hear a voice in your head again. This is good. Stay calm. And there is no need to be scared. Okay, you answer a little scared. <laughs> Can you state your name? Jacob. What do you want to say, Jacob? I can see you. The voice stops for a second. It's good, Jacob. Can you hear everything else? There are growls in the distance. They're looking for us. What should we do? Stay where you are. I'll find out more. Keep the conversation going, Jacob. You sit in silence, looking around as you try to find something to talk about the voice in your head. Okay, so spoilers for The Walking Dead, but there's this really good moment where, um... A character actually hears someone talk through a phone and begins to follow their advice and then realizes that he's hallucinating and he like cuts the uh, it's a cord it's a corded phone it's a really old phone and he cuts the um, the cord part off and the voice keeps coming out of the receiver and he just puts it in his pocket and takes it with him to just you know have it with him wherever he needs okay Talk about trees. Trees in the surrounding area seem to be watching you. You look up and see a large white tree with a face. It watches you silently. Hello? <laughs> Suddenly the tree moves. It looks as if laughing at you. Leave me alone, it says. You turn away nervously. Okay. Hurry up, Jacob. They're coming. Stand quickly and hurry to the campsite, placing a large log in the fire as you go. The werewolves are coming. You shout, we have to hide. <laughs> you 
You jump into the hole father left for you and cuddle down into it, curling up as you try to blend in with the leaves and dirt on the floor. You close your eyes and try to rest, but you hear the werewolves crawling past. Suddenly, Gerald enters your hideout. What are you doing here? He asks. Father told me to guard this spot. I'm hiding from the werewolves, you say. The werewolves are dead. It's safe now. You leave the hole. You stand up and begin to crawl out of the hole. You stand up and begin to crawl out of the hole. <laughs> Gerald stands there, blocking your escape. I thought you were hiding from the werewolves. You said they were dead, Gerald. I was. Then why are you leaving the hiding spot? I just needed to go. For a second. <laughs> you walk quickly to the campsite and begin crawling into it. I'm sorry, Father. I got. I was scared I got lost. Father reaches down and grabs you, lifting you out of the hole. It's fine. I'm sorry for yelling at you. It's been a long week. I'm sorry too, Father. He stares at you, his face hardening as his eyes begin to glow. Go into the woods. I want to talk to you for a sec. You nod quickly and spread off towards the tree, getting there within a few seconds. We need to talk. I don't want to lose my family, Father. He sighs. I'm not going to send them away. Not again. What do you mean? We're going on a trip. We are? Yeah, we're leaving this place. Moving to the city. Find your mother. I want you to help me run the shop there. You smile. Really? 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 He stares at you. What? Why are you so happy? I finally get to go with you guys. You're not going to talk about the city's defenses? I don't care about that. I want to go on trips. He frowns. I thought you'd be sad. I found a glitch in the, in the matrix. You kill father. Grabbing his head and twisting it violently. You're not wasting any time. You pull your knife out, stabbing him in the throat quickly because you smash his head to the ground. Alright. This isn't the real reality. We've got to wake up again. <laughs> you wake up in a cold sweat, your head pounding. You spend a few seconds vomiting to try to calm yourself down. Jacob, Jacob! What's wrong with you? You almost scared everyone. You turn your head, seeing your mother next to you. What time is it? She looks at you. Already evening. You've been awake for uh, asleep for a long time. I was worried about you. Stand up. I have to go. Where? I have to find my sister. Maybe her new husband will, go, will know where she is. The weather not slow. See you later, Jacob. You nod, walking off in the woods. You walk around it for hours as it continues to get dark. You're tired, but you keep going. You find something. A cabin. You walk up to it and knock the door. You wait for a moment before a young woman opens the door. She's very pretty, but has a tired look. I'm looking for Lucas. I'm his brother... in-law? I mean, Jacob. Lucas isn't here. Can I take a message? You frown. Actually, can I just speak to him? It's really important. I'm sorry, I can't let anyone enter like that. It's our house, not Lucas's. You need to be invited in. Stab the woman in the stomach. She lets out a pain yell before falling to the ground. You pull out your knife to go to grab her purse. No, leave purse. Wake up. You wake up, staring at the ceiling. You grab your knife and check the purse. This is the true level of reality. Oh shit. <laughs> Get up and leave the cabin. Walk to the woods. And then I pack in the belly, just walk through the forest. Find a man with a beard and a woodsman's hat. Oh. Oh god, I'm sorry for that. I didn't know you were a visitor. Visitor? Yeah, I guess. And I guess I'm leaving now. You leaving? Yeah, I just got here. I was walking around. He nods. Yeah, you're right. You shouldn't be here. Where's the nearest town? I don't know. Ours walks south towards the border. George stay in the woods and walk by. She's in your watch now. Peace part and you see the sun setting in the distance. You made a lot of progress. Wait, wasn't it already night? You walked for a few more hours before spotting a town. It's a little different than what you're used to, but similar enough to you know that you know what it looks like. You head into the town, knowing the police should be able to help you find Allison. The streets are filled with people. You approach a police car, and an officer notices as you approach. Hey, what's your problem, Heat? The officer asks. I'm looking for Allison. She goes to Westfield High School. I narrate, by the way. The officer shrugs. Don't know. You'll have to ask the office. Do you know where I can? The office? The officer points down the street. Police department over there. Maybe they know something. The street is cleared out. You thank him to walk towards the department. You approach the police department and run inside, asking the front desk if they know where Allison is. The receptionist informs you there's no one by that name in their database. 
Wait, maybe there is a glitch in the matrix. Wake up. Staring at the ceiling, you try to remember what happened before you fell asleep. Your head aches and you can feel dried blood on the back of your head. Oh, man. You remember seeing Allison. Wow, yeah, the game really wants me to find Allison. Black hoodie, black skinny jeans and gray hoodie. Her hair was light brown. You sigh and look around your room. You notice a gray hooded sweatshirt, which you grab and pull over your head. You grab some running shoes. Am I Allison? No, I got said, noticing it's nearly sunset. You stick your thumb out and begin hitchhiking. You're nervous as you want to, don't want to be stuck out here by yourself. After a few minutes, a, start, a car stops and you get, where are we going? The driver turns towards you. We're going to Juarez. You nod. Where from there? El Paso. You nod in response and the car speeds up. It's going way too fast. Suddenly the driver stands on the brakes. And you're thrown forward. You kill the driver. You got the keys in the ignition, shoving them in your pocket. You get out of the car walking over the man who now has regained consciousness. You pull out your knife, pushing against his throat. Where is she? He begins to panic. I have no idea what you're talking about. Get off of me. Kill him. Pull the knife out of his neck, staying at red. You're on his cell phone, dialing 911. 911, what's your emergency? The operator on the other end asks. You spell your story from the moment you arrived. <laughs> <laughs> the operator stays silent before asking if the man you killed was wearing a gray hoodie. Can I just say yes? You yes. I think you're lying. What's your name? Amanda. Why are you lying about your identity? Right, I'm supposed to be Jacob. I want to make sure my sister finds me. I'm Allison. Why are you lying? I'm Amanda's older sister. She goes to Westfield High School. They stay silent for a moment, telling you to come out with your hands up. Wait, so I was Allison? That's why I was wearing a gray hoodie. But why did he have a gray hoodie? Also, I'm Allison now. Here we go. Okay, I commit suicide by cop. You take out your knife and begin waving it around, screaming about killing cops. They take aim and you hear one of them yell, Drop the knife, Amanda. <laughs> Who is Amanda? Where does this go from here? <laughs> you stop, dropping the knife and raising your hands. Please, I'm scared. As they approach, you take out your phone and send one last text to your mom. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh this game's fantastic <laughs> oh holy lord oh my god that was awesome wow I really did find a glitch in the matrix there you really can just type wake up and end up on a new layer of reality you know that's some fucking Morrowind shit. That's some fucking Homestuck shit. You can just wake up and be on a new reality. That's that's how it works, you know? I am the true dreamer. What I bring is light. What I bring is a star. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, Alright. I might do this again, because it was really fun. But uh, I've been Alfred. This has been AI Dungeon. It's free to play, although you do need to make an account. Uh, and I think you can also download it on the Android. But yeah, that's uh, that's everything. <laughs> uh, so thanks. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.